While we're in the items out screen, let's take a look at some of the other and special circulations. So you can see there's a little zero next to each one, which means there's nothing in these tabs, whereas the items out screen has three. But you can see it's the same setup, the same grid format, the same options here. So let's choose this item as an example and go to our Actions menu. You can see that staff have several options here. They can mark an item lost by patron. So if your patron reports that they've lost an item, they can't find it, they don't know what happened, or they know what happened, they left it at the beach, they're not going to be able to get it back, or something like that, you can mark the item lost. You can also mark the item claims returned. That's, of course, where the patron thinks they've returned the item and staff may search the shelf and not find it. But as a courtesy to patrons, they may mark it claims returned and ask the patron just to double check at home. Um, that depends on what your particular library policy is, but this is the option to mark it. Mark claims never checked out means the patron doesn't believe they ever checked that item out in the first place. It's rare, but there are circumstances where a barcode was misentered and actually hit an item within the consortium that exists, but is not the item that you are attempting to scan or type in. The other reason a patron may say that they never checked out the item may be that someone else used their card and checked that item out. So your library should have a policy about how and when staff will use this option of mark claims never checked out. You can see uh, we have other options down here, which I'll talk about in a minute, but let's mark this one claims returned. You can see we get a pop-up asking us to enter a claims return date. Let's say the patron thinks they returned it last Monday. We'll mark that date and click Submit. So our claims returned item shows in our items checked out under Find Stopped Reasons. So claims returned is not a status, but a Find Stopped Reason. And that can be different from how other ILSs treat claims returned items. Let's mark an item lost. So I'm going to choose this item, go to the Actions menu, and choose Mark Lost by Patron. Lost is also a Find Stopped Reason. If we go to our Columns Picker and choose Item Status, you can see that the item status for the claims returned item is checked out. The item status for the lost item is lost but technically it is still checked out to the patron. All right, so I've made some changes in the patron account. So we have some additional items out and some of them are overdue. You see how the number nine is red here. I've added some non-cataloged circulations. So let's click on that list and take a look. You can see that of course there's no barcode for these items. These are the items that go out the door and may or may not come back. And once this due date has passed, the items just automatically come off the patron account. There's no way to check these items in. And once the date has passed, even if the items have not been returned to the library, they still disappear off the patron record. So these are not tracked in terms of the specific item. Only the circulation counts are tracked. And you'll notice there's no actions menu here. So I can't renew these items, I can't extend the due date, I can make no changes to them after they've been entered. Now when we look at our items out screen, when a patron has visited the library multiple times, you may have multiple due dates for their items. As I mentioned, since we have some overdue items, you may want to sort by due date. If you click on this field, it will sort in due date order, you can reverse it, of course, and I can see which items are due. Now I can renew any or all of these items. So let's say I check this box and go to my Actions menu. This item was due on the 29th of April. 
So if I click on Actions and go to my list, if I click on Renew All, that would actually renew all of my materials not just the one I've checked. And if I do that, it may count against my patron when some of these items are not due until far in the future. So you want to be careful about choosing Renew All from the Actions menu and make sure that you actually mean to renew every one of these items. Otherwise, just check Renew and that will renew this single item. So you can see my due date was updated to the 13th, and then if I reorder, the next thing that is due is on the 4th. So let's say I want to choose a specific due date for this. Maybe if I renew it, it would renew for too short a period of time, and I want to renew it for a longer period of time. I can go to the Actions menu, and I actually have two options here. I can edit my due date, but one thing to keep in mind when you edit due dates is that the system, so Evergreen, does not check to see whether another patron might have a hold on this item, and so you only want to use edit due date in situations where you've just checked out an item to this patron and you need to extend the due date because the period of time that it checked out for is, is not the appropriate one. Um, for instance, uh, in the current situation, we might want to check things out for longer uh, because the library is actually closed and we want to give patrons a longer time for the items that we're uh, maybe checking out to them for curbside checkout. Otherwise, you want to just renew because when you renew, Evergreen checks to see whether there are holds for that item. So in this case, what I want to do is click uh, Renew with a specific due date. And so that way I'm double checking that there aren't any holds, but then I can also choose a longer due date. So that gives you some options. So let's say I want to extend it to June 1st, and I can click Submit. And you'll notice for the items that I have renewed, they now have only one renewal instead of the two that they had before. You'll also notice that my patron has some fines from those overdue items. So Evergreen has a fine calculator that runs as an overnight process, but there's also a fine calculator that occurs if that overnight process did not calculate all the fines. That can also happen when you check in the item. Now once you've renewed items for the patron, the patron may want a receipt. And you can issue a receipt from the items out screen as well as from the checked out screen. So I can check all the items so that I include everything or you can just include the items that you renewed if that's all the patron wants. Go to the Actions menu and click Print Item Receipt and you'll get the pop-up message that it's going to your printer.